the complications of being. I had to chuckle to myself today when I realized I used the movie The Matrix much like other people use the Bible or Koran or Bhagavad Gita. Coming back to it again and again to test out a spiritual truth or to find some synchronicity with a current or past experience. I did that quite a bit this last week and I revolved around that scene in the movie where the character Cypher meets with the AI Mr. Smith and brokers a deal to go back to the pod and get a steak dinner in exchange for some sabotage aboard Morpheus's ship. He was just tired and fed up with the stark reality outside the Matrix and wanted something more than constant fleeing from the ever-present AI robots and the daily gruel that passed for food. We've all been there, especially during times when life just seems difficult and unrewarding. It's all a part of the greener pasture syndrome and can actually be a significant spiritual crisis because this disconnect from what we think we want and who we actually are being seems to bifurcate or cleave into our experience of life. On the one hand, there are present in your face circumstances and on the other there is how we wish things were and it's at this proverbial fork in the road where we choose to either suffer or do something about it the complications arise with the doing not so much about the physical logistics but much more about how or what we are being it is through this lens of who, what, and how we are being that causes our responses to what we are perceiving as our life. By choosing the high road, we see everything as an advantage or as leading up to something grand and fulfilling. By choosing the low road, everything becomes suffering and drudgery. The universe is happy to provide us with either and does so based on this being of ours. The hold up is not that simple, of course. As points of consciousness, we exist in many different realms. There is the realm of the body, the ego and its imagination, the subconscious, all the parallel lives, past, present and future, and finally, as a single eternal point of consciousness outside of time and space. It's no wonder that neurological research has concluded that our brains operate in as many as 11 mathematical dimensions. We need all that just to place ourselves with a body at a particular moment in time. Research in the field of epigenetics has discovered that the cells of our body pick up or receive the broadcast of who we are where we are a built-in quality of physical reality. When the broadcast is fully received, we call it incarnation and begin once again a physical third-dimensional existence. So, this begs the question, why do we do it? Although this is that age-old inquiry of why we are here, with new research findings there can be more of a complete answer and a complex one at that. The simple answer is we are here to be, to experience, to add our particular quality to overall existence. As Alan Watts has said, doesn't it astound you that you can shine the sun never having been taught how to do it? This is because we are, at the core, everything. Being outside time and space, we cannot be anything else. Basically, the only thing we do is make choices and then experience the results of those choices. More complexity arises when we become aware of our motivations for our choices. Do we choose for something to happen just for us and then focus our will in the belief that it will happen faster, a la Luciferianism with its do what thou wilt paradigm? Or do we choose to be something wonderful for the world, an expression of our divinity in service to cosmic will? Most choices fall somewhere in between, but the point is, it's all good and sanctioned. It has to be, because we are everything, and have been for billions of years. If it were not a good thing, it wouldn't have lasted as long as it has. So, the bottom line, I reckon, 
is to choose the highest and best of who we are and enjoy the unfolding of it throughout life, rolling with the various illusions of up, down, and sideways that makes life that amazing experience of being. You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin. Brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy RX. www.pureenergyrx.com.